my name is Chip Jackson. I'm a researcher at NASA Langley Research Center, and I primarily work on what the subject of this talk, porting our overflow CFD code to GPUs. I'll be talking about our experience at hackathons and beyond. So to get us started, tell you a little bit about what overflow is. It's a computational fluid dynamics solver developed primarily at NASA Langley. Um, it's used by a variety of different customers from industry to government to academia. It's a structured finite difference solver that solves problems on overset grids. So you can see an example of one of these overset grids on the top middle there, the Hyliff Com Research Model Grid System. So you have a bunch of different grids that are overlapping and we can solve these computational fluid dynamics problems using that. You can see some examples used for a variety of applications from transport to space shuttle rockets to um, rotorcraft. It's written primarily in Fortran 90 with no external dependencies besides OpenMP and MPI. It's been under development for very many years and has a lot of hand tuning. So the CPU version of this code is very performant, but it is memory bound. So we wanted to explore some of this GPU programming to see if we could take advantage of the higher memory bandwidth of GPUs. Before we started our hackathon, we had some pretty minimal experience using GPUs, but we did have a fair amount of experience profiling our code and on the CPU side. So the first thing that we did in preparation for these hackathons was create many apps. And these have been critical for our success on the GPU specifically, but they've even helped us on the CPU side. These many apps, are simple, small codes, emphasis on small. And that's really so that we can iterate on them quickly. We can make changes, update things, profile things quickly, build them quickly, run a problem quickly. These mini apps do exhibit some of the common motifs from our overall application overflow. And we do have some sort of correct answer that we, we can check to make sure that any modifications we make are not modifications to the algorithm or to the final solution, just to the performance of that mini app. Another benefit to us being a government institution is because we've made these small mini apps that are only useful for performance testing, we were able to release these mini apps as open source, which made it easier to collaborate with people at hackathons. And so at the hackathon, or we did create two mini apps for exploration at the hackathon. The first mini app was a central solver mini app. So this is a simple right-hand side and left-hand side calculation, just one of the many that are available in overflow. And then the solve of that system of equations. This represents about 60% of the total runtime of our main application overflow. Some of the motifs that are expressed in this mini app, we have stencil operations for our structured code and we have a batch scalar pentadiagonal solve, which is the left-hand side build up and solve um, that were part of this mini app. The second mini app was the Chimera boundary exchange mini app. This is those overset boundary exchanges. It's not really a significant portion of the total runtime of our application, but it does represent sort of a technical barrier to be able to run real problems of interest of how do we transfer data between different GPUs um, things like that. And so this mini app really just has some interpolation to some interpolation points. You pack up that data, transfer it over MPI, and then unpack it on your, uh, on the other device. So our first hackathon was in person at Oak Ridge National Lab in 2019. And this was really our first dip into GPU programming. And so our main goal was learning how to port to GPUs. This, this, these three steps were our primary approach. And if you were here on Tuesday for Jeff's talk, they should seem very familiar. Um, it's a coincidence because Jeff was our, one of our mentors that year. So basically we started out adding ACC parallel loop pragmas to the loops of interest. We created some data regions to replace the implicit copy in and copy outs to really move the data regions so that we transferred everything onto the GPU at the beginning, moved what we needed off at the end and didn't, didn't do any communication in the middle. And then we started to profile the application to determine how could we, what are some approaches we could do to improve performance. We really pulled out three things. 
The first was expose more parallelism. So the, the more amount of work that you have to do in a kernel is better. Do more work in a kernel, especially if this comes at a benefit of reducing the amount of memory you're loading from device memory. And then we could hide some launch latency with asynchronous launches. And we even investigated using some streams so that we could get some parallel execution between different kernels, uh, as long as our occupancy wasn't too high. At the second hackathon, this was a virtual hackathon hosted by NAS, which is out at NASA Ames in California in 2020. And at this hackathon, we really were focused on learning how to leverage multiple GPUs. And so this is where we focused on that overset boundary exchange mini app. Our approach for using multiple GPUs is we have one MPI rank per GPU. And we were able to use CUDA where MPI to easily and efficiently move data between these GPUs. So here's an example of one of our MPI calls. Um, it's just an IRC V. And basically with the OpenACC host data, Pragma, we can say this buffer that I want to move lives on the device. And so use that version of that pointer. And because the MPI implementation is CUDA aware, it can efficiently move data from that GPU um, to another GPU, which was pretty painless. As long as you have a working CUDA aware MPI, which I understand is not trivial. At the third hackathon, this was also another virtual hackathon, this time hosted at uh, Langley Research Center on the East Coast in 2021. In this one, we really wanted to learn how to use the profiling tools to get into the nitty gritty of the performance of our mini apps. Uh, so we did rewrite the linear solver, the pen batch pentadiagonal solver with CUDA Fortran, so we could take advantage of some of the we could more easily control which threads were doing what. We did group several kernels together to provide more work per kernel and reduce the amount of memory being loaded, going back to those lessons learned from our first hackathon. We did reorganize some of the kernels to reduce some of the register pressure, um, moving things closer to where they were being used, as well as doing some prefetching to reduce some long scoreboard wait times. We also did discuss some of batching algorithms to group grids together to improve the performance for a lot of small grids. So at this hackathon, we noticed that if we had a lot of small grids, um, which can happen in our application, that there wasn't enough parallelism to really get going on the GPU. But if we group a bunch of grids together, that increases the amount of parallelism that we can do in a single kernel. Um, which did improve the performance a lot for small grids. So you might ask, you went to three hackathons, why'd you keep going back? Well, we had continual improvement throughout our hackathon experiences. We really learned something new with each hackathon. And you can see this from the two charts here where I'm plotting the time for our application for the right-hand side in blue and the left-hand side in orange. Over time at each hackathon sort of before and after each hackathon, you can see here the continual improvements that we made throughout our experiences. And you can see on the right hand side for small grids, that's really where you know the grid batching, you really get, you went from 12 and a half seconds down to about 50 milliseconds. So batching that really increasing the parallel parallelism for that really helped. So overall, we were very happy with our hackathon experiences and improving the mini apps. And this is sort of a summary chart of where we are now in our mini apps. So on the left-hand side is the central solver performance. You can see for the large grids and small grids, both of them are behaving very similarly in terms of the time it takes to do each point per iteration on the GPU. The CPU version, the small grids are a little more performant because things fit in cache nicer. So you get good cache reuse for the CPU version. But overall, we're getting about a three time improvement on the GPU versus a full uh, dual socket Skylake CPU node with 40 cores. So we were pretty happy with the performance of our mini app. There's still room for improvement, but we were happy with where we are now. On the right hand side, you see the strong scaling performance of one of our cases for the communication mini app. And you can see we're about an eight time improvement in terms of packing up the data and moving it between GPUs. And you can see the number of ranks there. So we were happy with the performance of both of our mini apps. 
So based on this experience with our many apps, we want to move these lessons learned and this performance into our full application. Because we did have to make a lot of organizational and algorithmic changes in our application, we were not able to keep a single source between the CPU path and the GPU path. So after we read in all our inputs for the case, we, we pretty much branch off to the GPU path. We ensure that the request and options have been ported, transfer the necessary data, and then run the solver on the GPU. There is some smaller routines that we do have some data or some code reuse, but for the most part, we had to rewrite those functions. So now some takeaways about the hackathons. These were really great ways to get started and learn the basics of GPU programming. They really jump-started our ability to be productive on the GPU. We also developed some great contacts over the years with people in industry, government, and academia, as well as other people that are in the same place as us. So these were good people to discuss ideas with and learn from at the hackathons and afterwards. We also got some good contacts with vendor and facility staff to address some issues that we ran across throughout the years and some collaboration to bounce ideas off of. And these hackathons, it was very good to be in the same room with world experts and other groups who are there to help you. Um, and so we found that very valuable. In addition, the hackathons provided a very good way to have blocked off time that we could set aside to only work on this. And we're, we all have other things that happen at jobs and come up. It was good to have a week set aside where I know that I can focus on the GPU port and I don't I have minimal distractions with other work. Um, it was also good to sort of have that with other people. Yeah, I can block off my own week, but getting other people to block off their week with me to collaborate and work with others was very valuable. So sort of going off of this, I personally think that the in-person hackathon that we attended was more beneficial than the two virtual hackathons. Uh, the virtual hackathon was harder to block off time for multiple people. We still had teams open. We still had our email. We were still quote unquote in the office. And so there were more distractions in the virtual hackathon. It also provided a little bit less collaboration. You didn't have lunch together. You didn't have breaks where you'd bump into somebody and start up a conversation. You didn't have dinners or even just being able to get up and walk to another table and ask that as expert or talk with that group about their experiences. So I, I personally thought the in-person ones were very valuable. Not saying that the virtual ones weren't useful and productive, but I, I preferred the in-person ones. Some takeaways about OpenACC in general. It was quick and easy way to get our code onto the GPUs. It took us about two days to have most of the Central Solver Mini app running on the GPUs. So it was pretty quick to get onto the GPU. It did allow us to get most of the performance out of the mini app with some async calls and things like that. We were able to squeeze more performance out of the mini app than our initial port. We do use CUDA Fortran for certain kernels, primarily the pentadiagonal solver kernel to get more flexibility with some nested gang and vector parallelism. And that's something that I would like to have more have something, a feature for OpenACC to be able to have multiple levels of gang parallelism. And we have run into several compiler issues that have been reported. Most of them have been fixed in a timely fashion, but really only having the one, one compiler is an ideal. G4 trans coming, coming along and we didn't have access to a Cray compiler, but we would occasionally run into some compiler bug or something wasn't happening right and it would really stop our work or progress. And so that wasn't ideal. Also looking forward into the future for the, the big machines that DOE is putting together and things like that, it really seems that across vendors, OpenMP seems to be the preferred approach for Fortran offloading across these different vendors. We haven't really looked into OpenMP, but that's something that we're keeping our eye out for the future to just be aware of. And so finally, I'd like to thank uh, NASA, NASA's RVLT project for funding this work. Also like to thank all the people who helped organize and attend the hackathons and the experts who volunteered their time. And finally, we'd like to thank NVIDIA's Jeff Larkin and David Applehans for their extens extensive work with us outside of the organized hackathons to talk with and meet with. Those have been very helpful discussions.